welcome you to our midweek Bible study time of devotion and our prayer time for the week of October the 27th. Uh, this Sunday's sermon text and the subject of our midweek Bible uh, study is from Isaiah chapter 25. I want to read verses 6 through uh, the first line of 10, uh, and we'll talk about that for a few minutes. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, a, of rich food full of marrow, of aged wine well refined. And he will swallow up on this mountain the covering that is cast over all peoples, the veil that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. And the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces and the reproach of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, behold, this is our God. We have waited for him that he might save us. This is the Lord. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. For the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. Sunday morning, I uh, hope to look with you at uh, these verses, especially verses 6 uh, through 8. But in order to get a better understanding of these verses, uh, it will benefit us to look at a larger context, uh, specifically verses 25 through 27. I'd like to uh, use today, borrow heavily from the work of uh, L.O. Richards in his teacher's commentary. Uh, he suggests that in verses or in chapters 25 through 27, we are uh, introduced, as it is, uh, to the idea of a God uh, who can be trusted. And for the first time, there is here a tone of personal relationship. Uh, God's people respond to God saying, surely this is our God. We trusted in him and he saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in him. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Uh, we see uh, Judah uh, as a people viewing God uh, as the source of their salvation. Now for them, as we look at this in its historical context, it is prophetic and it follows for them a time of judgment. But we understand in a broader historical perspective and for individuals understood through the work of Christ in individual lives as well as through the church, but personally, the recognition that God is the source of our salvation, this can come at any time to anyone who chooses to trust God. Uh, Judah was seen as a people and their relationship to God uh, as they understood God as the source of salvation. This was, as I've already said, coming out of a time of judgment. That's not always the case for us individually. It very well could come out of a time of judgment, but we are, through the work of God's Spirit, we are able uh, to come uh, to the recognition of God as Savior through the work of Christ at whatever time we choose to trust God. And then coming out of this, um, Ed, uh, Richards uh, suggests uh, that there are great benefits of seeing God, uh, the Holy One, uh, as the source of salvation. As we understand this, uh, there are several um, transforming kind of things that uh, he pulls out of uh, chapters 25 through 27. Uh, he says, as, uh, as we enter into relationship with this God who can be trusted, we will find that praise uh, replaces fear, uh, chapter 25, verses 1 through 5, uh, as people realize that God is my God. The believer is moved to uh, 25 1 to exalt you and praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done marvelous things things planned long ago uh, catch hold of this idea the pronoun here uh, my uh, this is not some abstract view of God as distant deity 
Uh, this is understanding God personally up close uh, in relationship one-on-one. -on -one. God is my God. God is my Savior. Uh, this faithfulness of the Savior God, we understand through Christ, this faithfulness is a shelter from the storm. It is a, a shade from the heat of what for Judah would have been days of coming judgments. So praise replaces fear and joy replaces tears. Uh, this beautiful portrait, and we read those verses in uh, six through the first part of verse 10. And we have a picture here of a banquet. And now this is truly a banquet. This is not a fast food meal, a drive through. It's not a sandwich for lunch. This is sitting at the banquet table and the table is groaning under the burden of all of the food. And it's not um, leftovers. This is rich food, the richest of food, the, the, the most um, choice or the choicest of foods. And, and the aged wine that is uh, there uh, representing the food and the drink representing the very best that could be put on a table and this banquet table has been set by God himself for all people. Uh, and the promise is that out of this banquet or a part of this banquet will be God wiping away all tears. Uh, and then the response of those who trusted him as they experience the replacement of tears, they cry out, let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. Uh, there, the joy is replacing tears. And we'll look at this in more detail uh, Sunday morning. It is our uh, day of memories. And certainly, as we call the names of those who have uh, gone on before us uh, during the past 12 months, uh, it may be a time for the shedding of a few tears. But we will be reminded and are reminded through this passage and other passages of Scripture, Old and New Testament, that God promises uh, to replace our tears ultimately with joy. Not only uh, does joy replace tears, but peace uh, replaces oppression. Uh, the society that salvation builds will be a righteous uh, society. None of the unrighteousness of oppression, but a righteous society made up of individuals who trust God. Those whose minds are uh, fixed steadfastly on God, uh, will have perfect peace. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal, we see in 26.4. Righteousness uh, brings out that perfect peace that replaces oppression. Uh, then a, a fourth thing that we see is that righteousness replaces wickedness. Um, verse 7 uh, says the path is 26 7 the path of the righteous is level indicating a smooth and straightforward uh, walk or journey uh, redeemed people yearn for God and desire to walk in God's ways uh, this longing after God and the things of God this longing for God, rather than a longing for the law or a fear of punishment, this longing for God produces righteousness. Uh, and renewed people will want God to be at the center of their thoughts and their hope as righteousness replaces wickedness. Uh, and a fifth thing is that humility uh, replaces pride. Uh, this in chapter 26, 12 through 18. Uh, as you look at the, the people uh, of Judah uh, that considered themselves to be God's people because God had called them into relationship with him, uh, they have been, they have demonstrated great haughtiness, arrogance, um, sinful pride. Uh, but as they come to know God, this God who can be trusted, this God who desires personal relationship, as they come to know God in this way, it will make them see, according to verse 12, that, Lord, you have established peace for us. All that we have accomplished 
you have done for us. No longer are they uh, arrogantly proud uh, and thinking that they have done what has been accomplished through them, but they recognize that any accomplishments ultimately have been brought by the power uh, of the hand of God. There is in this passage a, a very sobering, um, someone called a, a poignant passage, which describes how uh, Israel, who after being redeemed, uh, will recognize uh, that there was a failure on their part to accomplish God's purpose. And what was God's purpose? God's purpose always has been to bless Israel, but through Israel to bless all others as well. So throughout uh, Israel's understanding of God's purpose for them is the awareness that if Israel is doing as God desires them to do, uh, they will be reaching out to other people as a witness uh, to uh, of God's love and God's mercy uh, and God's uh, call to righteousness. Uh, but uh, Isaiah 26, 18 uh, points out their recognition that rather than being a witness to the surrounding people, they chose to follow after the surrounding people, the pagan people. They followed after the pagan ways, following the idolatry of the, uh, the neighbors, instead of calling the neighbors away from their idolatry to follow the one true God. We were with child. We writhed in pain, but we gave birth to wind. We have not brought salvation to the earth. We have not given birth to people of the world. Uh, even as we understand that Jesus brings light, or light and life, the Old Testament people in there, when they understood God's purpose for them, recognized that they had a message of life to the people around them, even as they had that for themselves. But they said that they acknowledged, admitted, confessed, we have not given birth to people of the world. God wants to redeem his people, and he himself uh, will work through them to understand take the ministry of world redemption, first of all, through his son, Jesus Christ. And then as Christ lives and works in us, we're able to carry out or continue the work of redemption that Christ uh, has done, that we're able to share Christ's redemption with others. Finally, we see in 26, 19 through 21, that life replaces death. Uh, because of God, the dead will wake to joy. Uh, Isaiah encourages those who know God as their Savior. Uh, Go, my people, he says, enter your rooms and shut the doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until God's wrath has passed by. Uh, certainly, uh, there is wrath at the hand of a righteous God, but God in redeeming his people puts them in a place where there is uh, safety even in the midst of the passing wrath. Uh, not that God's people always uh, escape uh, harsh times or difficult moments, uh, but God promises this, this God who can be trusted, uh, promises in the personal relationship that we can have with him, that we do have with him, that he will replace uh, death with life, uh, that he brings us life. Uh, as Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We'll stop there just to give you that overview of these three uh, chapters or of chapters 25 and 26 uh, to see how the transforming uh, happens as this God who can be trusted enters into personal relationship with his people and begins to replace the ugliness of life with things of beauty uh, and things of joy. Uh, we'll look at that in more detail, specifically around uh, verses uh, 6 through 10 of chapter 25 this coming Sunday. This time I'm going to uh, bring up our uh, prayer list, and as always, 
uh, these are prayers or these are requests that have come to us uh, from you uh, as uh, people let us know during the week and often on Sunday during our time together, uh, people or situations that uh, they would request, we join with them in praying. And so I'll share with you this time, uh, this week's uh, updated prayer list. You see here, uh, there are church members uh, who are facing uh, health issues, and we want to remember them. Uh, specifically, I would update you on Eddie Whitaker. Eddie spent some time last week in the hospital. Uh, coming out of hospital, uh, went to the Spartanburg Rehabilitative Institute. That's at North Grove. Uh, Eddie is making good progress on my last report from him uh, and uh, looks forward to getting out of the uh, rehab facility stronger, much stronger than when he went in. Uh, let's pray for these, these folks who are before us. Uh, Lord, we do call the names of our sisters and brothers, knowing that you are the one uh, that can uh, strengthen them and can respond to uh, their deepest needs. We hold before you Rick Abels and Lee Gibson, Mickey Pruitt, Keith Dellinger, we lift up Albert and Hetty Wolf and Paul Barnwell. We call out to you, Doris Wilkins and Kay Ballinger, Linda Gowan, and Eddie Whitaker. Lord, meet the needs of these people long term, but also today. Uh, reach out to them in some way and let them know uh, your presence and your peace. We also pray. for uh, the family of Nelda Cook uh, as she, um, she passed away recently. We want to hold up uh, Nelda's family, oh Lord, and pray that you will uh, strengthen them and keep them close to you. We pray for these that are in the nursing home, these members of our church family, uh, for Peggy Ballinger and Doris Walkowitz, for Juanita Hammett and Ruby McDowell. We pray for Alice Warren and John Wilkins, pray for Betty Campbell and Doug and Barbara Wells. We hold up Barn Vonda Barnwell. We pray for Ramona Settle. Others have been uh, put before us uh, asking for us to uh, hold them up. We pray for Larry Kimbrell's sister, Betty. We pray for Gary Koob, uh, who is in hospital with COVID. Uh, for Eddie Johnson and Mickey Johnson, both uh, fighting cancer. Uh, we pray, oh Lord, for Jimmy Brown, who is recovering from COVID. Thank you for the progress he's made. And uh, we pray uh, with him that you will restore him quickly to fullness of health, uh, even as we give you thanks for how far you've brought him along. Lord, we pray for Reed Kennedy uh, as he continues to mourn. Uh, Lisa's passing. Lord, we pray for Donna's brother, Dan Presley. We continue to pray for the members of the Poplar Springs Baptist Church as they uh, grieve their pastor's uh, death from COVID. We pray for Phil Cook. And Lord, we hold up two families as they grieve deaths in their family. We hold up the family of Cecil and June Haynes uh, and the family of Pearl Sutton. Be close to them today, Lord. Um, grief work is hard work uh, and it seems never ending, uh, certainly in the earliest days. But Lord, we know you're faithful and we hold, um, we hold them up to you and call out for your faithfulness to them. And Lord, we pray for the the group of 17 that uh, missionaries, their families who are being held hostage in Haiti, we don't call their individual names, but Lord, you know this group and we join with believers all around the world in praying that not only uh, you will keep them safe, but Lord, we pray that you will bring their release. Even more, Lord, we pray that through this confinement, uh, you will use them to share the message of Christ with their um, with their captors. And Lord, may they 
may they be captured for Christ and uh, may uh, lives be transformed because of uh, this experience. And may, may you take something that's meant for evil and uh, make something good come out of it. Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name, even as we pray also for our church, uh, as we prepare together again in a few days to worship together, uh, prepare us physically, uh, prepare us spiritually. And Lord, we pray that our, our sanctuary will be a safe place. We pray that you will, um, that you will keep it free from infectious things. We pray that uh, in thanksgiving for the technology you've given us to be able to blanket that room with um, a cleansing of the air on a routine basis. And we pray that you will use not only the technology that we have been allowed to develop through your um, goodness, but we pray that spiritually you will make that sanctuary a safe place so that we can worship you without interruption, so that we can find the peace and the joy and the uh, sense of calm that only you can give us. And Lord, out of that, uh, may we uh, find the strength to give you worship as we renew our faith in you and as we uh, update our commitment to you. Uh, Lord, use those who lead in whatever capacity, whether we can see them or not, uh, whether they're uh, making sound better, whether they're singing, reading scripture, praying, uh, making music in other ways, uh, allowing us to see words or hear more clearly. Those who secure the exterior of our property, Lord, we hold all of them up to you and pray that you will use each of us in whatever way uh, to hold up worship to you as a united uh, community of faith. Lord, we pray these things together in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Uh, thank you for taking time to uh, join with me in this uh, brief Bible study and prayer time. Uh, share this availability with others inside or outside our church. Uh, and uh, take advantage of whatever opportunities we make for Bible study, for worship, uh, whether you can do that in person or online. Uh, take advantage of what the offerings are. Look forward to being with you on Sunday, uh, however we can be together.